All right, students, welcome to the mole. This is a mathematical concept in chemistry. It's also a, uh, a connection between things that you didn't really know had connections. You have to have your reference table, your periodic table. I call it the reference table. You're going to need your periodic table. And you got to have a calculator right now. Hit pause. I'll wait. Go get it. This is a cute little picture of a mole. It's kind of a cartoony drawing thing. It's not really what we're going to talk about, but he is cute. So that's why he's here. Now, to get to moles, we're going to start with some silly stuff. If you love somebody, you buy them a dozen roses. Now, I don't actually know why 12 is special. I mean, you would think if you love somebody, you buy them as many roses as you could afford. Or maybe you buy them no roses, right? Because love transcends roses. I love my wife and I don't buy her roses. But that doesn't mean I don't love her because I don't buy her roses. But a dozen, a dozen is 12. It's a word, means 12. When you play cards, you have to have a deck of cards. Now, most games require a deck that has 52 cards. I used to joke, but my son is older than you now. He's a senior in high school. He's older than most of you. Sometimes he would take a card and he would throw it away or lose it or cut it in half or whatever. So if you have what looks like a deck of cards, but it only has 51 cards, it's not really a deck anymore. It's useless. It's, you don't have enough. You don't have enough. And a deck means 12. I just went to the store the other day to buy a brand new pair of sneakers. Now, I happen to have two feet at the bottom of my legs. And shoes or sneakers come in pairs. A pair means two. I could buy two sneakers or I could buy a pair of sneakers. It, it's the same thing. These shoes are actually really cool. They're from the 50s and the early 60s. People used to wear them, females and males, they're called saddle shoes. I don't know why they're called saddle shoes. They don't really look like you could wear them riding in a horse saddle, but they are pretty cool, black and white shoes. I like that. Now, a mole is a word, but it's also a number. A mole is actually a lot of things, but at first it's a number. A mole is a certain number of particles. How many do you have? You could have a mole of atoms. You could have a mole of molecules, say a mole of molecules of water. It wouldn't even be that big. You could have a mole of cations or anions. Actually, you have to have them together. So you'd have to have a mole of cations plus a mole of anions to balance them out. You could even have a mole of these things called formula units. Now, the smallest mathematical concept of a, an ionic compound would be a formula unit, one unit of the formula. We can do math on that, but you can't actually get a single NaCl, for instance. A sodium chloride exists as a crystal. Millions of NaCls, even in one little speck of salt in your kitchen. A mole is this red number of things, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's that giant number. You don't, I, I don't know, you don't really have to write that number down. I don't even know what that number is called. You got, what do we got? We got the millions, the billions, the trillions, the quadrillions, the pentillions, maybe? Hexillions? This number is ridiculously big. But it's a, it's a number. You're actually going to remember it because we're going to use it all the time. Now, nobody ever counted that high. You couldn't count that high. This number has been worked out mathematically, and it's called Avogadro's number. This little woodcut, it's not actually a, a painting or a, or a drawing, it's a woodcut. It's... <clears throat> an Italian chemist that studied gases, and then they named this number after him, but nobody could count that. So for instance here, how many atoms are in a mole of the best element, mercury? Well, if you had one mole of mercury, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's a lot. How many atoms are in a half a mole of carbon? Well, a half of that number would be 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. You'd have half a mole. You could have a whole mole or a half a mole. You could have any number of them. You could have two moles. Holy cow. Now, how much is the mass of a mole of mercury? This is where it's going to get really, really cool. One atom of mercury, put your finger in box number 80. I'm going to do it for you now. I'm going to model some good behavior. See it right here. Mercury as an average weighted atomic mass of 200.59. So in our class, we're going to round that to 201. Remember, got the whole nucleus in my hand. I got the whole nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. 
If you happen to have Avogadro's number of atoms, that would weigh, ready for this, 201 grams. Did you see that? One atom, 201 AMUs. One mole of atoms, 201 grams. We're not going to do any math. It's just perfect. One atom, 201 AMUs. One mole of atoms, 201 grams. And that's going to work for everything, which is really cool. So let's see. What's the, the mass of one mole? If you had Avogadro's number of carbon atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, how much would the mass be? Well, put your finger in box six. Carbon, one atom, has a mass of 12 AMUs. So if you have exactly one mole, you would have 12 grams. How cool is that? No math. One atom is called the atomic mass, and then you have one mole, which gives you what's called the molar mass, the mass of a mole. How about now, oh, this is tricky now. Two moles of aluminum, two. Put your finger in box 13. Aluminum has an average weighted atomic mass of 26.98154. So that's, what is that? 27. 27 AMUs is one atom. That's the atomic mass of aluminum. What if you had one mole? That would be 27 grams. Well, this is two moles. So it'd be two times 27, 54 grams. This is the size of a marble. It's not even a lot. There's a lot of atoms, but they're really small. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times two for aluminum, that's only 54 grams. Uh-oh, helium. Helium doesn't weigh practically anything at all. It's a, it's a gas that floats, right? Very low density, what? Helium, four AMUs is one atom. Four grams is a mole, but here we got three moles. Four moles, four grams is one mole. Eight grams is two moles, and three moles is going to be, of course, 12 grams. So if you had three moles of helium, it would only be 12 grams. See how this works? One atom is four AMUs. One mole is four grams. And then you can have as many moles as you want. You can have, a, oh, look at this one, half a mole. You can have a decimal. You need a calculator sometimes. Put your finger in box number 12. One atom of, merc of magnesium. See, I almost said mercury because I like mercury, M's and M's. Um, but it's magnesium. One atom of magnesium is 24 AMUs. One mole of magnesium is 24 grams. This is half a mole, half of, half of 24. How do you do that? A half times 24, that's 12 grams. So if you put 12 grams of, of magnesium, right, it'd be about, I don't know, maybe about this long, a little strip, put it on a scale, if it comes up exactly 12 grams, they have them all. Not too much. Atoms are crazy small, crazy. You can have a lot of them. You can have a half a mole, which is still 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. You could never count that high. It, it wouldn't weigh that much. Okay. This one's tricky. Number 10. 10. How many is 10? It's like Sesame Street. How many is 10? We need to count chocula. The mass of a mole of oxygen gas. Now, I'm telling you, it's tricky. Write something down right now. Get a pencil, write something down. Make sure it's in pencil because you're probably going to get it wrong and that's okay. How much is the mole? How much is the mass of a mole of oxygen gas? Put your finger in a box now. O for oxygen. 15.999. 16. One atom weighs 16 AMUs. So you're going to tell me one mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams. Like that? No, 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 no. Watch what happens here. Look at this. Oxygen is O2. When oxygen's a pure gas, remember you got two holes in your nose? One oxygen goes in each side. That's not really true. Oxygen's a Hucklebrook twin. Oxygen is diatomic. There's two oxygens, one molecule, two atoms bonded together. So it's going to be double 16. It's going to be 32 grams, 32 AMUs for the atomic mass. 32 grams for a mole, right? Hunkelbrift twins, they're doubled. You gotta remember which ones are the Hunkelbrift twins. H-O-N-C-L-B-R-I-F. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. So, Hunkelbrift twins, here we go. Hydrogen. 
Mass of hydrogen says right there, 1.00794 rounds to 1 AMU, but it's H2. The molar mass of hydrogen is two grams per mole. That's the unit we like, two grams per mole. That's called the molar mass unit, the mass per mole, molar mass. Now the next one up is gonna be O2. O2, oh, we just did O2, it's blue. It rounds to 16 AMUs each, but it's O2, so it's 32 AMUs for oxygen as a molecule, and it's 32 grams per mole. Next one up is N, right? Ns. Put your finger in a box. Where did I get that number? Look at that number. It's right there. 14.076 rounds to 14 AMUs, but it's N2. That's 28 AMUs. One molecule, N2, 28 AMUs. How about a mole? That'd be two times 14 also, but it's grams this time, 28 grams per mole. One mole of nitrogen, get a balloon, fill it up. When it's exactly 28 grams, you have a mole of nitrogen. Chlorine, chlorine is Cl. It rounds to 35 AMUs in an AMU, in, in AMUs, but it's Cl2. So it's gonna be 70 AMUs for a chlorine molecule. It's gonna be 70 grams in a mole. Bromine, somebody's ringing my phone. I'm not getting up because this is too important. Bromines are 80 AMUs per atom, but bromine is a Hunkelbrift twin, it's double. So it's gonna be 160 AMUs for BR2 molecule. A mole would be 80 times two grams, or two times 80 grams, 160 grams per mole. So if you wanted a mole of bromine, you'd have to go get 160 grams of it. See how they all have different Molar masses, they also have different masses per atom or per molecule. The atomic mass is the mass of a single particle. Sometimes it's an atom, sometimes a molecule. They all have different atomic masses or molecular masses. And they, of course, have different molar masses. One atom or one molecule is measured in AMUs, and one mole would be measured in grams. Iodine's up next. Iodine is 127 AMUs per atom, but it's I2, so that's gonna be 254 AMUs. We double that to get 254, but here we gotta double it in grams to get a mole. So if you wanted a mole of iodine, you have to get a tablespoon and get a few scoops. 254 grams of iodine, it's a little more than a half a pound, right? Actually, that's closer to a pound. 400, well, half, half a pound. 454 grams is a, is a, is a pound. So this is about a half pound. So this is a kind of a chunk. You hit somebody with that in a bag, you're knocking right on the ground. Iodine's kind of powdery though, but still, it'd be almost, ah, it wouldn't be funny. You should never do anything like that. But in a, in a movie, somebody gets hit with a little paper bag full of this, blow up and make a big mess. F2, fluorine has an atomic mass of 19 AMUs for an atom, but it's doubled, so it's 38 AMUs for molecule, but that's for a molecule, that's the atomic or molecular mass. In a mole, we need to know grams per mole. We just change the unit. Instead of 38 AMUs, each atom or each molecule is gonna be 38 grams in a mole. Now, this question 12, this is, this is the best chemistry question so far. Mathematically, this is really good. What is the mass of a mole of magnesium oxide? Now you saw magnesium oxide, I showed it to you. Um, we took the magnesium metal, we lit it on fire, it turned into that white ash, I put it on my fingerprint and you can see it. So I could say number 12, what's the mass of a mole of magnesium oxide? I could also say it a different way with a cool vocabulary where I could say, what is the molar mass of magnesium oxide? That means exactly the same thing. The mass of one mole or the molar mass of, same thing. One mole of a substance is equal to its molar mass. Now, in order to do a problem like this, in order to do the molar mass of a compound, you have to do this little setup. You have to write the, the formula correctly, MgO. That's the formula with a line. And then underneath it, you have to list very slowly and in order the, the atoms that make up this compound. So we have Mg and then we have O. There's only two in this one. Sometimes there's four or five. But for this stuff, it's just two things. We set it up like this. Now, there's only one Mg in this stuff, and there's only one O. So one mole of magnesium 
is 24 grams. Remember we just figured out the molar mass of magnesium, it's 24. You put your finger in the box, one atom is 24 AMUs, one mole is 24 grams. So one mole times 24 grams, the magnesium part makes up 24 grams. Now this is O, single O, it's not O2 here. When it combines with magnesium, it's not Hubblebrief anymore, it's a single atom. So one mole for a one O is gonna be 16 grams. And then you gotta add them up. The part that's magnesium plus the part that's oxygen makes up the whole thing. So the answer comes out to be 40 grams per mole. You can say it a couple different ways. You could say magnesium oxide has a molar mass of 40 grams per mole. Or you could say that 40 grams of magnesium oxide equals a molar magnesium oxide. They're the same. The molar mass is, what is the mass of one mole of magnesium oxide? 40 grams per mole. 40 grams of magnesium oxide equals one mole. Now, again, I just said this. This is important here. Magnesium oxide is a compound with a formula. And in this formula, each magnesium ion bonds to a single O anion. It's not O2. Not here. Oxygen by itself is O2 because it's pure oxygen, it's diatomic. It gets its stability bonding to something else. Here, the oxygens get stable by bonding to magnesium. So it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. And the same thing's gonna come up, right? Look at the bottom here in the bottom blue, H2O. Oxygen's diatomic when it's oxygen, but when it's water, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. It's stable with two and one. It doesn't have to be H2 and O2. It's two hydrogens bond to one oxygen. Then carbon monoxide, one carbon atom and one oxygen atom gets stable. Now when oxygen's pure, remember, O2. But when it's bonded to something else, when it's bonded to something else, it gets stability in a different way. It can get stability bonded to one, to one oxygen and one carbon. HCl, look at them, they're both Hunkelbrift twins. But when H and Cl bond together in a one-to-one -one ratio, hydrogen's not diatomic and chlorine is not diatomic either anymore because they're not pure, they're bonded together. Watch the formulas. This is gonna take practice. It's not even, it's not even that hard, but it's, it's not that easy. It's the first time we did this. Let's try it again. What is the molar mass of carbon dichloride? Now we can write the formula because we know carbon dichloride means one carbon and two chlorine. So we write the formula, we draw a line, and then we list the kinds of atoms that are in this compound. We got carbon and we got chlorine. We have to write them just like that. Give yourself some room. And then we have to count. How many carbons are in this formula? Just one. And how many chlorines? Two. So we have to multiply for carbon one times what is the molar mass of carbon? The molar mass for carbon is 12 grams per mole. So one times 12 and for chlorine, it'll be two here because there's two chlorines, two times 35. Look at that. For carbon, there's only one carbon in the formula. So we, we'll, we multiply one times whatever the molar mass of carbon is, 12 grams per mole. And then chlorine, there's two chlorines in the formula. It's not CCl, it's CCl2. So it's gonna be two chlorines and each one of those moles is 35. And then we have to add them up going across and sum them up going down to get the answer. So one times 12 is 12, two times 35 is 70, add them up. Carbon dichloride is 82 grams per mole. The molar mass of carbon dichloride is 82 grams per mole. If you had 82 grams of carbon dichloride, you would have one mole of it. If you had one mole of carbon dichloride and you put it on a scale, it would be 82 grams. That would be the mass. How cool is this? Moles are right in the middle of everything. We got how many particles and how many grams? for atoms and for molecules. We're making a lot of progress here already. Now, this is a tricky question. I start at the top, we gotta to do the bottom first, and then we're gonna come back to this because we don't know how to do this quite yet. What is the mass of 2.70 moles of sulfur? This is a chemistry class. We're hardly ever gonna have one or two or three. We're gonna have weird numbers with decimals. It says in red there, let's do the bottom part first. Let's do the bottom part. What is the molar mass of sulfur? We have to put our finger in the box. Sulfur has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. That means for number 20 here, one mole of sulfur equals 32 grams. Look how easy this is. Look, bada bing, bada boom, they're really big. 
the molar mass of sulfur is 32 grams per mole. How did I know that? I put my finger in a box. I rounded 32.065. I rounded it to the nearest whole number. One atom of sulfur, neutrons and protons, 32 AMUs. One mole, 32 grams. And then 20, I just said it a different way. One mole of sulfur equals 32 grams. The molar mass is really an equality. 32 grams of sulfur equals one mole of sulfur. Now, this is important. When you have an equality, you can turn it into a conversion factor. Remember we did like changing feet into inches and things like that. 12 inches equals a foot. We can make a conversion factor. We're going to make a conversion factor right now out of the molar mass. Every molar mass is an equality. This one happens to be one mole of sulfur is 32 grams of sulfur. They equal each other. We're going to use that. Now, I'm going to go back to question 18. What is the mass of 2.70 moles of sulfur? Watch how we do this. The starting point is 2.70 moles of sulfur over 1. Now, we put it over 1. It doesn't have to be over 1, but we put it over 1 so you know that moles of sulfur is, is in the numerator. It is, but it's easy to see when you put it in the numerator. And from this equality, 32 grams of sulfur is one mole of sulfur. We can put them in the same kind of a fraction. They're equal to each other, so they're equal to one. Since moles is in the numerator to start, we put the one mole of sulfur in the denominator so we can cancel the moles of sulfur. We cancel the moles of sulfur, and then we just multiply across. 2.70 times 32 over one equals 86.4 grams of sulfur. Now, one mole of sulfur, 32 grams, that's unlimited. That's from the periodic table, it wasn't a measurement. So there's three significant figures in the front, unlimited significant figures in the molar mass, and then the answer is 86.4 grams of sulfur. Now, every single box on the periodic table has the atomic mass which means it's also, if you change the unit from AMUs to grams, you have the molar mass. If it's a compound, you can figure out how to figure out the molar mass of a compound. And then once you know the molar mass, you can take any number of moles you have and convert it into grams. You could have 2.7 moles, you could have 5.3 moles, you could have 127.2 moles. You just do some calculations with a calculator. In red, in the middle, the conversion factor has unlimited significant figures. So whatever you start with, in this case, we started with three significant figures, right? Well, maybe it's this way. Depends on which movies you watch. Three significant figures, that means three significant figures in the answer. All right, let's play one or two more times. This is a great question. What is the atomic mass of beryllium? What is the molar mass of, of beryllium? We have to keep track of this. This is a subtle difference. Put your finger in a box of BE. See it? We're going to round it to nine because we're friends. The atomic mass for beryllium is nine AMUs because there's four protons and five neutrons. But the molar mass of beryllium is nine grams per mole. The number is the same. The units are totally different. An atomic mass unit so small, if I threw an atom of beryllium into your eyeball, you wouldn't even feel it. It's just atoms are preposterously small. But a mole of them, you got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you got so many, nine grams, it would hurt, right? You wouldn't want something like that in your eye. That would be bad. Hunk of metal. It would hurt. It would hurt you. It, would, it wouldn't just hurt you. It would hurt you bad. Nine AMUs, though? <clears throat> Who cares? You wouldn't even know. Yeah. Have, have 18. Put one in each eye. Atoms are so small, you wouldn't even know it. But moles, obviously, are so much bigger. So let's see. Hey, I like this lady. Who knows who she is, right? She's in the greatest movie ever told. She's my hero in the movies. I like her. All right, you look it up. I hope you can figure it out. Now, look at this decimal. Three significant figures, 0.356 moles of lead. What is the mass of that many moles? How do we even do this problem? It's always best to start at the beginning. Who said that? The good witch Glinda said that. It's always best to start at the beginning. We have to first get the molar mass of lead, and we're going to write that down neatly. I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. And then we're going to put it over one. So let's find, where is lead? Lead's number 82. How are we doing here? Look at that. PB. 207 AMUs is an atom. 
207 grams per mole. So start in the right place. Let's go on the next slide. The mass, 0.356 moles of lead over one. Always put it over one because the units are in the numerator, but you don't see it that way unless you put them in the numerator. Then the molar mass. Every, every box on the periodic table has a molar mass inequality, which means a conversion factor. And in this case, we're going to moles of lead in the numerator. We put moles of lead in the denominator. The moles are going to cancel. And then we have to multiply across the top, 0.356 times 207. And then we divide it by one, but that doesn't really matter. And look what happens. We got three significant figures in the front, unlimited in the middle. We get the answer. We have to round it to three significant figures. Now, this is a chemistry question. It's, you can't just take some lead and say, how many moles is this? You know, figure out how you have to, you can measure in grams. You can convert. It's easy to convert from grams to moles, but we're doing math problems. We're trying to understand the connection between moles and molar mass, right? And that's how we do it. Now, last question. This is going to be the last one of the day. 6.15 moles of my favorite, my second favorite. Mercury is the best. Boron. What do you got to do? Well, put your finger in a box. What is the molar mass of boron? I can't see it on the screen. It's 10.81. So that's going to be 11 grams per mole. Where are we starting? 6.15 moles of boron over one. So write that down, 6.15 moles of boron over one, and then we use the molar mass. 11 grams of boron is a mole of boron. The moles are gonna cancel. We multiply across three significant figures, bada bing, bada boom. Now, honestly, we zip through a lot of this stuff. But moles are gonna be really important. We're gonna do a lot of calculations. So far, we've been going from moles to grams. We can actually go the other way, grams to moles also. We can take some boron, put it on the scale, figure out what it weighs, figure out how many moles it is. Later, we can take something and put it on the scale, convert it into moles, and then we can convert it into how many atoms is it or how many molecules is it? Because there's a connection between moles and number of particles. And even cooler than that, if it's a gas, a certain volume of gas always 22.4 liters is equal to a mole of particles. So if you have a balloon, 22.4 liters, right? And you fill it up with helium, you have Avogadro's number of particles in there. So if you know how many, how many liters it is, you know how many particles it is. Or if you put it on a scale, figure out how much does it weigh? The mass is connected to moles. The moles is connected to volume. Moles is in the middle of everything. So once you know something, you, you could do a lot of math. You could figure out a lot of stuff. If you really have 67.7 grams of boron, mathematically, that's 6.15 moles. Every mole of this stuff has Avogadro's number. How many atoms is in 67.7 grams? Bada bing, bada boom. We do some math. I'll show you how to do this all tomorrow. Moles is great because... It's an amazingly simple concept. The math is a little hard. The numbers are big. Avogadro's numbers are so big. You need to watch your scientific notation and stuff. But if you know just a little bit of math and you have a calculator, you don't even need a big calculator, just a little calculator, you can make the most amazing connections. Everything in chemistry is connected. We're just going to start to see this coming up now. So there we go. Look, we're already done. All right. Thanks for checking in. You keep going. I'll see you later or tomorrow, whatever that means. All right. End. This is a great job.